like I said, today is going to be a little different. As I thought about this week, I thought about how many, many things have happened. Some of the things have been expected. It's normal around this time of year, the school year ends, graduation happens. We transition from one reality, one rhythm of life of getting the kids up in the morning and going to school and coming home and doing homework into a, another transition of summertime, of sleeping in, of not having to worry about homework, of just a change in schedules. These are the natural transitions that happen at the end of the year. It's natural. This week we also witnessed a transition that is exhausting. We witnessed a transition of devastation. And that I don't know about you, but for me, we began to relive a lot of the same feelings and experiences we had a year ago. As we saw the images coming from Moore and Shawnee, we began to relive those terrors. So I don't know about you, but for me, my heart has been turned upside down. There's that natural feeling of, oh, I'm so proud of the graduates. I'm so proud of these kids moving on, and I'm so proud of everybody completing their grades, and and I'm so proud of just how great a year it's been. And then, oh my gosh, look what just happened. And so amidst all the good things of this week, it's been, I think, an emotionally hard week for some of us. And so as I began to wrestle with this series we're in and and this call that we have felt about sitting in Romans 12 until we fully understand that passage I realized two things one I'm really struggling with that first line of the passage love must be sincere I feel like God keeps calling us back to these words Every time I read through and research out that passage, I can't get past these words. And I thought about how the only way we can transition through into this new reality is that we cling to the source of this love. That in order for our love that, to be sincere, in order for these rhythms, when they get all turned upside down, we must return to the love and the root of our sincerity. We must return to God, our refuge, our source of hope in life, our lover, our refuge and strength, our center. God is the source of the love that's talked about in this passage. The word that is used for love is agape, and that word carries a meaning of complete and utter divinity. That it is a kind of love, it is that kind of love that can only be experienced by being connected to God. It is the only thing that, the only kind of love, the only way of life that can come out of that. And that that love is experienced through divine relationship. And it's it's a kind of love that cannot be mocked. It cannot be faked. It's a kind of love that only can be sincere. That only... can be of God. It's a love that can't be manipulated or used to manipulate others. It's a love that transforms the soul from the inside out and creates a new world around us. And when the world turns upside down, it's the love that we run to. It's the love that we grab hold of. And it's because of this love living within us That we hurt too. Because God's hurting. But sometimes we don't know what to do with that hurt. Sometimes when our world turns upside down. Sometimes when all of the rhythms of life and everything switches all around. We get a little lost and we need our souls to become centered again. We need to be reminded as the song sang... This is our Father's world. Oh, let us ne'er forget that though the wrong seems off so strong, God is the ruler yet. And so, 
instead of a traditional sermon today. I want us to have a time of centering. A time of spiritually returning to God. A time of reminding ourselves how He wholly holds us. How, like the picture that Carol showed us, when we are in our most devastating time, He is there and he, we see Him and we run and we grab. He grabs us up in His arms. As she told me the story earlier, the little boy, what's his name again? Hezekiah. Hezekiah. He was, his parents weren't there yet. They couldn't get there. But he saw his neighbor and he ran to him. And he leapt in his arms. And the look on, what's your nephew? Jim's face. It's one of complete, I am here. And it is that same remembrance that I want us to experience today. Remind ourselves that Christ is here. That God's arms are wide open. And that we can leap into them. As I wrestled through and thought about how the Holy would want us to kind of recenter, I remembered an experience I had many, many years ago in Chicago at a church called Willow Creek Community Church. I was there for a worship arts conference and, and um, that evening the preacher had, her name was Nancy um, Beach, this was Nancy Beach, not Nancy Ortberg preaching, and she had set aside the traditional form of sermon and she began to show us these different images, these different sketches by a man named Jonathan Rogers. Um, and she walked us through these sketches and said, where do you see God in this? Which one of these is you. And so today, I want to do something similar. So I want us to begin by centering our hearts, preparing our souls for prayer, by singing a beautiful song, Sweet Hour of Prayer. holy and gracious God we come to you today we pray and place our hearts before you asking Lord for renewal and strength for a centering on you be present be present in all that we do Lord God hear our hearts hear our souls your name we pray. Amen. As we go through this, watch for where you are. God is our refuge and strength, an ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way, 
and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. Refuge. Oh, how there are times we need refuge. Refuge from the world. Refuge from the pain. Refuge from our pain. Refuge from ourselves. At times we become full of grief and sorrow. Our hearts are heavy. We are confused and feel, as the psalmist said, like the earth beneath us has given way. We feel hurt. We feel the hurt of others. We feel the hurt of our own heart. The hurt of our grief. The hurt of our sorrow. The hurt of our shame. And the hurt of our sin. We seek you, O God. And Lord, you pick us up. You just hold us in your arms like a little child. You let us cry all the while holding us. We feel the security of your arms and the comfort and gain strength in your arms as you dry our tears. We find you for we are in need of your refuge. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. As we grow in that comfort and refuge, we begin to see the world through His eyes. We begin to see His creation. And we see Him in friendships, in service, and in love. We realize that we couldn't see the world for what it really is without Him. And we look around us and we see there is so much to see. And our words echo the words of the author Douglas Copeland when he says, My secret is that I need God. That I'm sick and can no longer make it alone. I need God to help me give. Because I no longer seem capable of giving. To help me be kind as I no longer seem capable of kindness. To help me love as I seem beyond being able to love. And we begin to take on His eyes and we begin to love in ways that we had no idea we could love. And we begin to be kind in ways that we didn't know we could do because we see the world now through His eyes. But then there are times when we're walking with Him, even been walking close with Him, and we wonder, God, where are You? Where are you when disaster strikes? Where are you when I hurt? Where are you when? And God answers back. I'm not the one who moved. I've been here all along. Holding you. Comforting those in need and weeping with those who weep. I never left. And in that moment we realize even deeper our need of Him. As we hear the words of the poet E.E. Cummings, we realize that they're God's words to us and our words to Him. Here's the deepest secret that nobody knows. Here's the root of the root and the bud of the bud and the sky of the sky of a tree called life which grows higher than soul can hope and mind can hide. And 
this is the wonder that is keeping the stars apart. I carry your heart. I carry it in my heart. soon we realize that our heart is becoming his heart our prayers are his prayers our passions his passions our grace his grace and our love his love and we surrender we truly surrender for the first time in our life but not in a way that signifies defeat no this kind of surrender creates freedom a new kind of freedom. Unlike any freedom we've ever known. And yet we realize we've lacked all of our lives. It's finally the freedom to be our true selves. And so, we are free. Free to laugh. Free to dance. Free to play. Free to hope. To love who we were created to be. It's a freedom that brings an inner peace that we have longed for. This freedom becomes a driving force in our lives and brings us to the point of an unquenchable love, an unquenchable compassion and service for others, not out of obligation, but out of pure love and passion for the freedom giver. And we dance and play in his arms. Our, li- our lives have changed and we are new people for we know with conviction with hope with freedom that God is our refuge and strength he is the life giving ever present help in trouble and therefore we will not fear So the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. And we know God is our refuge and strength. God is our ever-present help. God is the freedom giver. God is the victory maker. God is the hope. God is the love we long for. God is the sincerity we have. God is our center. And God gives us life. And we live in this peace. And we trust His words that say, Be still know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. And live out that victory. Take a moment to let the Holy seek in the truth of His victory in your life. His presence Lord you are our refuge and strength you give us the ability to be who we were created to be 
you show us true love. And because of you, we can have a sincerity of love in this world that is unmatched. God, we lift up today those who are hurting. We pray for those across Oklahoma and across our world that need to know your peace who need to feel the comfort of your hands around them and need to know the hope of the victory we can have in you. Lord God, you are our refuge. You are our strength. We surrender our souls to you. In your son's name we pray. Amen.